been a while. The bat just doesn't say much, but if it is the Napa leather, then it's the highest spec for 1.5. Only in the 1.8 will you still get a panoramic sunroof. Okay, let's go. It's been five years. I remember when this car first came out, 2018. Everybody is excited. Everybody wants to check it out. And everybody who checked it out was flabbergasted. It was like jaws drop, right? The, the price point versus the ride quality, the comfort, the leather, the uh, adaptive cruise control stuffs, the you know the fancy thing where you say hey proton and then you open and close the windows and all that you know all these were so new half a decade ago and time flies, time flies and now it's five years later this car is still here and when, I mean, yes, they have updated the engine from a 1.8 to a 1.5, you know, now it has a dual clutch transmission, but the car still drives smoothly, the car still responds smoothly, goes. What I want to explore, I mean, for me, any car maker that passed me a test car, I'll take it, right? I'll take it, and then uh, for me, I'm just curious. Five years later, how does it feel? Is it as groundbreaking as it was back then? And how has the landscape been? Because at this price point, it is going against the likes of price point wise, a high spec Honda City to a something like a Honda Civic, all right? But of course the proposition is different. This is more mature family oriented because it's an SUV. And then when I think about it, over the landscape where its price point is, is it still competitive, right? You can compare this to, in terms of price point, is like what, a Mazda CX-3, right? And of course, the, the HRV and all that. So I'm just driving. Now it's like after work hours, about 5.15. And yeah, man, it is still a very comfortable, very tidy handling car, you know, quiet, comfortable, plush for its price point. I haven't even mentioned the, uh, the interior fit and finish. This is really something that uh, people who have enough exposure to cars will be able to tell, right? There are certain ways where this car's interior plastics, the way that they are put together, are so finely fitted that most car makers would avoid this type because they wouldn't be able to match it but I mean these guys do it anyway because they are able to to fit them to such a precise fitment and of course the X70 when it came into Malaysia it was a revelation you know people people snap it up sales were booming I remember during the press conference I asked <coughs> the CEO I said Proton have had a hard time trying to sell cars that are 80,000 the Suprema what makes Proton have the confidence to sell a car that is 100,000 120,000 uh, what type of branding, brand building efforts that Proton wants to embark on in order for Proton to be able to be perceived as a brand that can be there selling 120,000 cars, 110,000 cars. He gave me an absolutely short answer that five years later, actually don't, that is, doesn't even need five years, two years on, has proven his answer to be the correct one. He pointed at the Proton X70 and then he said, this car will build my brand. So the way he answered it is true. I mean, what makes, what makes world brands, uh, world famous brands being world famous brands? 
What makes Toyota being Toyota? Toyota's brand was built by its product. Of course, on a much more smaller scale in Malaysia, in this context, uh, the Proton brand is no longer being associated with cheap, runabout, crude, lousy cars because of the X70. And that opens up people's acceptance to other products like the X50, the S70 that is coming, you know, uh, X90 and, and the likes. Because the feedback on the X70 was so good, you know, the car is well built, the car is comfortable, people felt, people genuinely felt they receive their end of the bargain. It is, it is a deal, right? People feel that, hey, I pay 100,000 to Japanese brands, this is all I get. But I pay the same amount of money to my fellow Malaysians who was in Shah Alam, fitting these cars, you know, working there, my Proton brand, you know. And I'm getting this, I'm getting a car with lane keep assist, you know, adaptive cruise control, uh, voice activation, smartphone mirror link. I get, I mean, if you get a top spec, you get a panoramic roof. And to be honest, Napa leather wasn't something that is even conceivable in cars at 300,000 ringgit, you know, but five series people never get Napa leather. <laughs> uh, BMW or Mercedes E-Class never get Napa leather and they choose to put this in and uh, so for the first time ever people who spend cars that are spent on cars that are about 100,000 were able to experience these features like the boss seats you know the, the power controls that controls the passenger seat they were amazed because these were things that are usually in much more expensive cars. So five years later, now that the, the landscape has changed, uh, uh, everybody has new models, getting more competitive and all that. So I just want to relive this and, and I was like, okay, let's drive it on a you know, daily usage way because I don't need to bring this to a Gunting run to, to, to whack it. And nobody does that. And of course, we all remember when this car came out, it, 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 it received such a massive pile of stock orders that they couldn't deliver the car. A lot of people complained. I mean, I, I don't know why Malaysians are, are pretty interesting. We like to buy things that everybody is buying, right? We like to go to restaurants that everybody is queuing same thing right and then we complain on google reviews that the queue is very long huh i wonder why right so knowingly buy a car that is on massive waiting list because the car is good the car is affordable and then complain angrily that you need to wait if you just think for another moment, right, is there a reason that anybody inside Proton, from the dealer to the salesman, to the sales manager, the dealer principal, the factory people, everybody, all the way up, Proton Eda to management, every, is, is it possible that any of them tell their staff, okay, it will stop Proton X70, semua kasih simpan dalam warehouse, jangan bagi dulu ah, simpan dulu, biar queue. It's impossible, right? They want to solve it as well, but hello, that's how it was. That's how it was, right? The global supply chain issue, uh, the microchip issue, the COVID shutdowns, the lockdowns, all these affected everything. And I don't know, man. I mean, for me, if I go to a restaurant that has a visibly long queue, I won't complain that the queue is long on Google reviews and give them a three star. This is so, that's why not everybody can become a judge, right? Not everybody can think objectively or speak objectively, separating emotions with facts and figures, right? So yeah, they, they've had their fair share of problems from not being able to, to supply stocks. And then the other thing is spare parts. We all know Proton went into a merger of sorts or bought over of sorts 
uh, with Gili. Again, should I use the same example? Spare parts, say, spare parts semua, kasih simpan dalam warehouse. Okay? Jangan keluarkan, ah. biar dia orang tunggu. Impossible again. I tell you, I know people from Proton, of course. They are pulling their hairs. They want to solve the problem. You know, they are humans. They are people with family members, with kids, just like you and I. They want to solve the problem. Nobody wake up, go to work, and tell themselves that today I'm gonna screw my customer. Nobody does that. Anyway, all those are over now. The car is also five years old now. They have updated the, the engine and all that, but I still think this car, compared to stuff like these, not even these, even, even compared to the previous generation BMW X1, Mercedes GLA, even the current Mercedes A series cars in terms of build, fit and finish and all that, I, I still think this car is competitive. Hello, thank you, thank you. Yeah, my brother-in-law has one. He has owned it since day one. Uh, his is out of warranty already. Yeah, 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 yeah. Compared to this X1, which is the same age as this car, there's no comparison. Performance, this beats that. Build quality beats that. Soundproofing beats that. Uh, the old GLA, of course, this one also beats that. Yeah, yeah. Out of Proton's new generation cars, my my favorite is still the X50. I I mean it, it's not as plush as this, it's not as spacious as this, uh, but the drive is the much smaller compact size, the sportier design. Yeah, the X50. Still very nice. This neighbor has an X70 and X50. Oh yeah, I should drive around my condo to see how many mm, X70, X50. Quite a lot. My condo used to have very few local cars. Most are Japanese or Continental. But ever since the X50 and X70 launch, I see a lot of them in my condo. Yeah, X50 as well. Oh, this guy has a Satria GTI. Bone stock, beautiful. Yeah, this car is still very, very competitive. Okay, the X70. So at this price point, I think for a uh, standard family mid-size SUV, I still think this car is extremely competitive and still a very good choice to buy. Mm. The drivetrain pairing is very good. You don't have awkward moments of uh, juddering and all that. Yeah. yeah, it's done well. And Proton told me they, they touch up the handling as well. Decent, good handling. Tidy. It is never clumsy. You know, you can do high speed bends and apply the brakes and you won't like fall apart and all that. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, let's go to my favorite spot. Ooh. Speed bumps. And don't forget, huh? Ringgit has dropped a lot. Ringgit has fallen a lot. Yeah, Malaysians are super blessed, you know. You all have to know that we, we are super duper blessed. Let me give you an example. 20 years ago, a Toyota Vios is 80,000. 20 years later, a Toyota Vios is still 80,000. Just tell this to anybody all over the world and nobody, they will find it unbelievable. Hey, we got drop our dollar, our ringgit. <laughs> all right, cheers. Okay, this is the interior of the X70. Now, five years ago, having an LCD screen in the middle is something, some of something of a big deal. All right, now it's no longer such a thing. Right, and then having a touch screen over here with uh, infotainment, everything integrated was also a big deal for a segment, but now it's no longer a big deal. Okay, but nevertheless, you still get your uh, mirror link and all that. Yeah, it's unfortunate that it just doesn't have the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto thing. Okay, so that's something we need to live with it. 
but you can plug in your phone, have it mirror link, and then you can. I mean, some CarPlay, some Android Auto are still cable operated, so treat it as cable operated, then you get to mirror your phone here, okay? Now, apart from this, I mean, you still can play your phone, you can play your music and all that without mirror link, all right? Those things still work. So down here, you get the full uh, aircon controls, which it has become something of a... Uh, Something, something that people appreciate now, right? Full physical buttons to operate everything. I really hope there will still be cars that let, allow us to have physical controls of stuff because it's just more pleasant, okay? And then uh, the sport buttons and all that. Eco mode, sport mode, hill descent control, parking, park assist and all that. Very logically placed. Uh, the touch points of this car is just oh, none of the touch points feel cheap none no it, not a single area in this car feels cheap I have to point this out you know, I've been playing with it this morning this is rubberized the soft touch rubberized feel and this is uh, you know setting chrome metal plated plastics you know they feel cold to the touch they totally feel like metal even these parts all feel cold to the touch uh, very good materials okay now in car manufacturing right, anyone in car manufacturing would know this when I point this out nobody would dare to create an assembly of parts that are completely equal in height that means when this part and this part fit together very few people in car making right would design the fitment like this they will either design this one to overflow that one to mount from beneath to hide the conjoining lines why you go into Peugeot's you go into uh, even Mercedes-Benz uh, you will feel sharp edges all right in a lot of them Koreans do this really well as well but for these guys to, to dare to just mount this uh, commonly held area and the fitment is so nice, it's so flush I don't mean you can't feel anything, you can definitely feel the fitment but it's not sharp, there are no sharp edges anywhere you can find a lot of these sharp edges in, in luxury cars like Mercedes-Benz in their lower end models I kid you not okay, here as well, very nice very nice, even here Okay, so there's not a single part in this car that when you touch them, you feel it's coarse, it's harsh. Say for example, the, uh, the S70, this part is hard plastic. This is, this of course not, this is a different price point car. And this entire dash is soft touch. See, soft, very nice materials, very nice, all over, okay. This is not, of course, it's not brushed aluminium. It's a, it's a, it's a layer on top of plastic, but it's done really well, All right? This feels normal temperature as you as you run your finger near the aircon vents. It feels cold to the touch. Very nice. Okay, still okay. This one now looks a bit tiny. Just two cup holders hidden under this. Could have just revealed it, you know. Cup holders. The size of them are so small. They could have put it sideways. And I have more compartment, but anyhow, I still have a nice compartment over here. I'll be it is small, and then this one. Look at this. This is an a car ionizer. Why no other people does that? This is this assembly itself is an in-car air purifier and ionizer. Amazing, right? This is where it sucks in air. This is where. It pumps air out that are ionized and filtered. Lovely design. And the seats, I have to say, the seats are really comfortable. Very, very comfortable. Okay. The ball seat controls. Something that wasn't available in cars of this price point ever. Okay. The glove box and these are the uh, the cruise control stuffs all on the steering wheel 
Okay. Definitely a car that has been out for five years, we're so used to seeing it, we will feel that, oh, I get tired of, of seeing it. I mean, nobody can blame you, nobody can blame them. I mean, it's normal to feel that way. It's out. But that doesn't mean, you know, that doesn't mean that uh, just because it's out for five years, it's no longer a good product. There are a lot of products that are still out there. There are a lot of products that are new, but still not good enough, you know. So, this is uh, still a solid product, to be honest. When you judge the price point, the overall fit and finish, the performance that you get down here, you still have that compartment, a USB port, you know, on this side. And then here as well. But of course, in this time and age, when everybody see a design like that, we would have immediately expected the bottom part to be hollowed out. But this is not, okay? This is not. Still a decent, not just decent, still a nice cabin to be in, to drive about. I mean, when it, when it comes to the amount of money that you spent, okay? So, for some reason, uh, we did ask them, they did ask China and all that, they, they couldn't get Apple CarPlay Android Auto. Alright, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> are they on the ban list by US, you know, or, or car makers in China just decided to be really careful about relying on uh, US tech too much, if they rely on too much, and then one day they will just cut off and then again, they're back to square one, okay? The rear compartment, so my, my feet is size 11 and a half, okay? I have a lot of room here. I can slot my feet underneath as well. Uh, go watch my Mercedes GLA video, all right? Where I touch all these points to see whether there are any sharp edges and all that. I like doing that because as a premium car they shouldn't right so in terms of seating comfort at the back let me show you this the seat back angle is done really well now, this angle is very comfortable uh, it's not it's not as straight as the uh, cars like Macan and all it's certainly way more spacious than a Macan okay Way more spacious than that. Alright. So this seat back angle is somewhat like the I think not as slanted as the Harrier, but it's a very good angle. For a long distance journey, it's a very, very good angle. Alright, and then my visibility out, out of the window is also pretty nice. And then this one. Swap my hand there and then I fall asleep, my hand won't drop out. I always love cars with this slanted uh, handle to slot my palms in. All right, so it's a, it's a nice. I I I for one, if I buy any car, I would want a panoramic roof. Okay, I will always go for panoramic roof. But as you know, panoramic roof. If your car is seven, eight years old, the water runners inside might get stuck with grime and dirt and all that, and then water will start coming in. Hundred percent. Seven, eight years later, it will happen. Okay, so you have to clean your gutters and all that. Okay. Uh, uh, so tight. Uh, this is interesting. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. A very sophisticated looking armrest with two cup holders. Um, some car makers just put two holes here, right? They just put two holes there. Now, the reason some of them put two holes in the middle is because they have a wider armrest and they allow you to put your hand while you have your cups, okay? But these type of cars are narrower, so they don't do that. But you have to look at the, the leather stitching on this car, you know? It's nicely done. It's nicely done. Reminds me of the Camry. Really bad stitch work. Very, very bad stitch work. 
everywhere. The stitching was everywhere. And some Nis Nissans as well. Really bad. Okay. So overall, you look at the, the cabin. You look at this from this angle. The leather, the door card, the metal pieces. It just looks a lot more premium than Japanese cars of this price point. Right? At this like 90 or 100k price point. Still does. Even here, look at the aircon man. Look at the way they garnish this. Right? Look at the way they do this. There are a lot of European cars when it comes to this area. They really cheap out. You know, they don't look as nice as this. Okay, so just remember this view and then go check out the lower end German premium cars. Okay? Yeah. Let's look at the boot. The loading is very, very high of this car. The, the way from where you need to carry your luggage to where it goes in is actually pretty high. All right. And the boot is decent but definitely not the largest in class. Definitely not the largest in class. Uh, cannot be compared to a CRV in any measurable way. Okay. Proper quality stuff. The thick boards. That cut off sound as well. Spare tire. Your tools. Tonneau cover. Yep. At least you get everything you need behind. Okay. And if you want extra storage, of course, you can fold the seats down. That's the benefit of SUVs and hatchbacks. That's why people buy them. Right? So, the design hasn't been changed. Alright? It hasn't been changed. Still good looking. That's a facelift variant, but I kind of prefer this original. I mean, I, I noticed a lot of cars, right, after they facelift, right, I mean, they have their own design, but not necessarily... It's good. Oh, no wonder the ultra contact tires. These are good, good tires. These are good tires. Is it here or there? I want to look at the engine cover. And a lot of people say that, oh, you know these cars, uh, the their price in China, price in Malaysia, you have to understand, these cars were left-hand drive, right? They were engineered right-hand drive and produced here. And Malaysia never had the volume for amortization, of course. You know, in manufacturing, the more you produce, the less the cost is, right? So, yep, that's the engine bay. Look at the engine bay, it's so tidy. Yeah, only Lexus does that. Even a lot of Europeans no longer do that. A tidy engine bay like this, clamshell. The uh, fit and finish of these cars are no need to argue already. The way they produce, the way they do their fit and finish is just really, really good, solid solid right still still a very very solid proposition in the market okay no longer as crazy dominant as it was five years ago as five years ago most cars of this price point are still pretty crappy all right but now there are a lot of really decent ones right they handle really well as well so it still holds its fort, I would say. Um, let me know in the comments, what would you buy else around this price point? Okay, cheers.